good morning dear student friends today we are going to discuss about the further part of the turbine that is about the uh, francis turbine we are going to discuss about for the francis turbine uh, the part which we are going to cover is about its a uh, design aspects that is various design considerations and points those are required to be remember in the analysis part so here in the right corner we are finding that the runner of a francis turbine those are the vanes mounted over it this is the portion which is provided for the shaft reinsertion of the shaft so shaft will be here in a vertical direction here over this there will be the guide vanes and guide vanes are going to direct the water or jet towards the vanes and from this part the water is going to move further towards the center that is this is the uh, radially inward francis turbine so parts we will discuss one by one the first one is the ratio of width to the diameter it is denoted by a small n and it is nothing but the ratio of the width b1 to the diameter of the fill that is a d1 at the inlet so it means that the whatever the b1 is there which is is going to represent the width at this inlet section we are assuming that this is a inlet section and this is the outlet section for the so this is the b1 is a and b1 and d1 both are related to the internal part or the section through which the water is going to have its entry inside the runner through the fans generally the value of the n that is a ratio of the width to the diameter n ranges between 0.1 to the 0.45 the next parameter about the same is the flow ratio which is denoted by k sub x f so flow ratio is nothing but the ratio of the velocity of a flow at inlet to the theoretical velocity of the jet that is when the jet is going to strike or the water will be directed by the guide vanes towards the actual vanes those are mounted over the runner that means those vein, these vanes in that case while moving inside it will have the velocity that is nothing but the velocity of a flow that velocity divided by actual velocity of the jet that is under root twice gh which is called as theoretical velocity of a jet and that ratio of the velocity of a flow to the velocity of the jet is nothing but the kf that is a flow ratio whose value ranges between 0.15 to the 0.30 that is a 1.15 to the 0.30 the next one is the speed ratio which is indicated by a ku or a pi in previous lecture we had already seen that for the pelton wheel that is a tangential velocity u is equals to pi dn by a 60 and from that another equation also we had seen that u is equals to ku under root twice gh where that ku or a pi is nothing but the speed ratio and that root twice gh we are going to consider here as a, a theoretical velocity of the jet this is a, a root twice gh this theoretical velocity of the jet which will be there when the jet is going to be strike to the guide vanes at that time whatever the velocity possessed by the jet that velocity is the jet velocity so the ratio of a tangential or the peripheral speed of a runner to the theoretical velocity of the jet is nothing but the speed ratio ku or pi this is a expression which we had shown here it is a ku or the pi is equals to u by root twice gh and the value of the ku ranges between 0.6 to the 0.9 so this is about the speed ratio next parameter so we are going to consider we are going to see about the a fan a single fan we can say that will be applicable for all the fans those are mounted over the runner blade runner so first one is the uh, discharge so after the jet is going to strike how much amount of the water is going to flow through a, a particular vein or a runner total it's a total we can say 
so that discharge is nothing but the area of flow into the flow velocity so the area of flow is nothing but the surface area and the flow velocity is nothing but the vf so the surface area of a flow at inlet we can say so we will consider that this is a one of the vein then d1 is its a diameter internal diameter we can say at the inlet diameter d2 is the diameter at the outlet b2 is the width at the outlet that is a outlet means the shaft we can say at the shaft so from this portion where we are finding that the b1 as a soleus through which the water is going to come inside here it is shown there is a v up with a velocity of v up 1 so jet will be here in and the directing vanes are on this side and from that the water is going to come actually inside the fan with a velocity of the v up 1 and it is going to be exit at the shaft it is it will be going to collected here and it will be connected to the draft tube around the shaft we can say and from there further it is will be collected or transferred to the downstream end that is a tail rest so this will be the v up 2 that is the velocity of the flow at the outlet that is uh, near to the shaft d2 is the diameter at the outlet and d1 is the inlet diameter of the fan so with respect to that the area of the cross section or the area of a flow we can say so area of a flow is nothing but the 2 pi r h in general equation so 2 r is nothing but the d as we are talking about the inlet so r1 will be the radius and d1 will be the diameter at the inlets so 2 pi d1 b will be the width so 2 pi sorry 2 pi r1 into b1 will be there and 2 r1 means the d1 so pi d1 b1 and here for consideration of the thickness actual surface area will be or water area, water area will be is nothing but the pi d1 pi into d1 minus t1 that is the thickness we have to subtract so by rearranging the terms so multiplying factor we have considered for thickness as a kt1 which is considered as an, a thickness factor or the thickness coefficient so the surface water area here as a surface area of the vein is nothing but the pi d1 b1 into kt1 and the velocity of the flow at the inlet as a v up 1 so this is the discharge equation number of the times the kt1 is kt1 if not given in that case we have to assume it's a, a value up to the 0 0.95 or so on its ranges between uh, ranges up to the 0 0.95 the next parameter the runner diameter d2 the runner diameter d2 at the outlet we can say it is approximately d2 is the approximately one half of the diameter at the inlet so if you consider this is the diameter at the inlet means the vein will have the maximum dimension diameter at the inlet and minimum diameter at the outlet so d2 will be generally d2 is the half of the d1 that is a standard form and u1 that is the velocity at the u1 will be as the d2 is the less one so here we will have the velocity at the u2 will be 2 times the u1 then the velocity of the flow at the exit that is a v up 2 so for getting the v up 2 we are assuming that there is a no loss of the water while movement of the flow from the inlet to the outlet that is from the periphery of the runner to the center of the runner so a discharge is a constant means we can apply here a continuity equation that is a q is equals to q1 is equals to q2 so discharge at inlet we have already seen that is pi d1 b1 kt1 into v of 1 so similarly at the outlet there will be the pi d2 b2 kt2 into v of 2 so for getting the velocity of the flow at the outlet generally uh, we used to uh, we used we will get the v up to from that but generally the velocity of the flow at the inlet and outlet are assumed to be the same one that means that there is a conversion of the energies those energies are nothing but the potential energy and kinetic energy they used to get convert and the velocities is to remain the same at the inlet and outlet if you will consider v up 1 is equals to v up 2 we used to get the equation for b1 and b2 that's the b2 we used to get 
टू टाइम्स द बी वन हाउ इज इट सो विल सी दैट इन द नेक्स्ट पार्ट कंपेरिंग द बोथ द थिंग्स दैट इज द पाई डी वन बी वन के टी वन इंटू वी एफ वन इज इक्वल्स टू पाई डी टू बी टू के टी टू इंटू वी एफ टू हियर आई हम आई हैव कलर द थिंग्स दोज आर विद द सेम कलर दोज आर हैविंग द सेम मैग्नीट्यूड वी एफ वन वी एफ टू इव द सेम वन के टी वन एंड के टी टू थिकनेस वी आर गोइंग टू अजूम टू वी हैव अ सेम वन पाई इट्स मैग्नीट्यूड इज अ थ्री पॉइंट वन फोर और ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी टू बाय सेवन सो so just cancelling the common term that is pi kt1 and vf2 will have the expression as d1 b1 is equals to d2 b2 as d1 is equals to twice d2 put up the things so d1 is equals to twice d2 so b1 is equal, so here we will get instead of the d1 as a twice d2 into b1 is equals to d2 into b2 so d2 d2 will get cancels and we will have the expression as b2 is equals to twice b1 that is putting the values twice d2 instead of d1 into b1 is equals to d2 into b2 it implies d2 d2 gets cancelled so b2 is equals to twice b1 this is the expression for the width and velocity of the flow at the inlet and outlet next uh, next part is uh, regarding the remaining parameters so remaining parameters are nothing but the angles at the inlet angles at the outlet velocity of the whirl velocity of the relative velocity that is actual velocity with which the jet strikes the fans for finding those parameters at the inlet and outlet we have to use the velocity triangles at the inlet and outlet we are going to discuss that in a detail then uh, how many number of fans should be there on the runner blade so exactly the uh, number of the fans those are varies between 16 to 24 but in order to avoid the impulsive force as regularly the directing fans are directing the water towards the or the jet towards the actual main fans of the runner at that time while moving movement of the water from those directing fans towards the actual fans there is to act an uh, impulsive force so to avoid that periodic impulse we should have the number of fans over the runner blade either less than number of the guide fans or more than guide fans by magnitude of 1 that means that we should have the number of fans either one more or one less than number of guide fans why is it so because to avoid the periodic impulse so that there will there will not be any sort of the vibrations the next part is the work done by the runner so after having the impulse impulsive action of the water over the number of the fans mounted over the runner the how much that work will be done by the runner so the work done as the in turn work done of the runner is going to have the effect of the runner in the rotation it's a angular rotation either clockwise or anti clockwise this direction will be the clockwise or this will be the anti clockwise so the torque will be there in it means that there will be the tangential force into the radius so torque into angular velocity will be there as a work done as work done is the work done per second is nothing but the force into displacement per unit time so force is nothing but the tangential force as a, a torque and the displacement per unit time that is theta per unit time is the angular velocity so that will be the torque into angular velocity in the previous part already we had seen that the relation for the torque and angular velocity and from that we had expression as a rho a v1 into v w1 u1 plus minus v w2 u2 or if you convert that a into v1 as a discharge that is a discharge q is equals to av then we will have rho into q rho is a density of the water here we are considering if that other fluid fluid is there in that case we have to assume that density of that fluid so that density into the discharge into v w1 u1 plus minus v w2 u2 but for the maximum work done we is to assume that whatever the flow is there at the outlet that is a radial if you are assuming that 
radiate outward flow at the outlet then in that case we used to get the velocity of the whirl at the outlet as a zero so we used to get the expression as only rho q into v w1 u1 that is to have the maximum work done this is about the work done by the runner then the next part is the hydraulic efficiency so hydraulic efficiency is nothing but the power developed by the runner to the power supplied to the runner power supplied to the runner is by the water we are assuming the water so power supplied by the <coughs> supplied by the water is the water power so the hydraulic efficiency is nothing but the conversion of hydraulic energy of the water to the mechanical energy that is the ratio of power developed by the runner to the power supplied by the water to the turbine that is the runner that is nothing but the water power so in the previous line we had seen the what power developed by the runner so now the power supplied to the turbine that is the water power per second for the water which is having the head as h that is the pressure head h is a rho g q h so efficiency is nothing but the runner power by the water power now runner power in the previous slide we had seen density into discharge v w1 u1 plus minus v w2 u2 so the net efficiency we will have the ratio of those two terms this is the first term this is the second term so cancelling common terms so density and a discharge so we will have v w1 u1 plus minus v w2 u2 by g into h if maximum efficiency we want to have for having the maximum efficiency the flow has to be radially outward in that case v w2 will be zero so we will have v w1 u1 by g into h that is the expression for hydraulic efficiency this is the common part which is essentially required for the design part of the francis turbine and solving the numericals over the francis turbine now we will see the one of the example over the francis turbine that is the design numerical we will go for before going further proceeding we will uh, see the advantages and disadvantages of the francis turbine over a pelton field so uh, first one is nothing but the control of the variation of the head if we look into the control of the variation of the head for the pelton wheel it is a, a complicated than the francis turbine but in case of the francis turbine the variation of the operating head is a so much easier because here we are having the guiding vanes and the guiding vanes helps in managing the head of the water over managing the head of the water which is going to be utilized for the work done therein that is to develop the mechanical energy that is conversion of hydraulic energy to the mechanical energy the next advantage of the francis turbine is that the operating head can be utilized even when the variation in the tail water level is relatively large when compared to the total head in this whenever the available head available head we want to utilize completely when there is a variation in the tail water level in that case for utilizing the same again we are going to have the effect of the guide vanes so that after changing the angle of the guide vanes we will be able to change the direction of a strike of the water over the fence of a runner so this is the another advantage of the francis turbine next one is the mechanical efficiency of the pelton wheel decreases faster with the wear and tear as in the pelton wheel there are buckets there are buckets and the buckets are getting continuously striked by the jet so single bucket is getting striked so the whatever the surface area of the bucket is there which is going to be in contact with the impinging jet is a small as compared to the surface area of the vein which is going to be in contact with the gliding water so the wear and tear will be more in case of the pelton wheel than that of the francis turbine where and it results in a decrease in the mechanical efficiency so it means that whenever there will be the wear and tear in that case the efficiency of the pelton wheel decreases rapidly than that of the efficiency of the francis turbine 
what does it mean that suppose that the wear and tear of the francis turbine and the pelton wheel are having the same magnitude say one unit is there so for one unit of wear and tear or the change in the dimensions the efficiency of the pelton wheel decreases more than that of the francis turbine that is the meaning of this meaning of it the next one is uh, regarding the overall dimensions that is if you are going to install the pelton wheel and the francis turbine at a, a plant to generate the mechanical energy and further connecting to the uh, turbines to have uh, further connecting to the generators to have an electricity in that case the size required or the total area required for the francis turbine is less as compared to the pelton wheel this is the regarding the overall dimension then the next part we are going to uh, see about the disadvantages as for each and everything there is to exist the advantages and disadvantages here we are comparing the advantages of the francis turbine with respect to the pelton wheel there exist uh, some disadvantages of the princess francis turbine over the pelton wheel the first disadvantage is that for the turbid water the turbid water causes the more wear and tear than the pelton wheel if the same water same turbid water is allowed to strike over the pelton wheel and over the francis turbine in that case whatever the wear and tear will be there that magnitude of the wear and tear of the francis turbine will be the more than that of the pelton wheel next is the repair and maintenance as pelton wheel if we will open its a casing in that case we used to directly get exposed to the buckets those are mounted over its a runner blade runner but in that in the case of the francis turbine the blades are or the fans are covered by covered on both the sides they are embedded inside a, a small wheel the runner is a small wheel here and it is further covered by a casing it means that if there is a, a something material has been got blocked material has been uh, got stuck inside the vein in that case for removal of that it becomes difficult also its inspection and the repair is tedious than that of the pelton wheel the next one is the cavitation the cavitation is not nothing but the generation of the negative pressure or the dropping of the pressure below the atmospheric as in case of the francis turbine water is to move through the vents in that case if the available head below the same below the turbine that is a uh, through the draft tube if that draft tube is going to suck the water at the highest rate in that case the amount of the water at the outlet of the francis turbine would will be would will be moved further in downward direction at a higher velocity if that velocity of the movement of the water through the outlet of the francis turbine increases in that case there is a chance of the generation of the negative pressure inside the vents which results in the uh, cavitation but this is the this is not the case in case of the pelton turbine pelton wheel pelton wheel turbine we can say as after work done water used to directly flows immediately rather moves downward so there is a less chance of the cavitation in pelton wheel pelton turbine but there is a chance of the cavitation in the francis turbine next one is the related to the water hammer effect the water hammer effect is the having it's a, a troublesome and it's a maximum amount magnitude magnitude for the francis turbine than that of the pelton wheel and the last one the uh, further is nothing but below 50% head means suppose that the francis turbine is working at the uh, 50 meters of the head if the head becomes 50% of that means up to the 25 meters in that case if the turbine is run for a longer duration it results in a cavitation and that cavitation is a serious problem and it is it is a more troublesome but this is not the case for the pelton wheel if for the pelton wheel it run at the less head in that case the work done will be the less but the cavitation problem will not be there means the further 
further uh, drawbacks will not be related with the Pelton wheel, but those are going to be there in, in case of the Francis turbine. So, this is about the advantages and disadvantages of the Francis turbine over the uh, Pelton wheel. Now, we will discuss about the next point that is the uh, design numerical we will go for, one of the numerical we will go for. Consider uh, we are going to assume that there is a inward rad inward flow reaction turbine. So, inward flow reaction turbine is nothing but the Francis turbine. So, here after I am going to uh, have an, a word as a reaction turbine. So, reaction turbine is nothing but the Francis turbine. The details are the uh, details are here. Inward flow reaction turbine is there whose external diameter and internal diameters are 1.08 meter and 0.54 meter. The turbine is running at the 200 rpm. The width of the turbine at the inlet is a 240 millimeter and the velocity of the flow through the runner is a constant and is equals to 2.16 meters per second. The guide blades makes an angle of 10 degree to the tangent of the wheel and the discharge at the outlet of the turbine is a radial. Draw the inlet and outlet velocity triangles and determine absolute velocity of the water at the inlet of the runner. The velocity of the whirl at the inlet, the relative velocity at the inlet, runner blade angles, width of runner at outlet, weight of the water flowing through the runner per second, head at inlet of the turbine, power developed and the hydraulic efficiency of the turbine. Firstly, we will understand that which entities are given to us and which entities are asked to us. So, the diameters inlet internal and outer external diameters are given to us means the D1 is 1.08 meter and uh, D2 that is outer diameter is a 0.4 meter. Then it is running at the 200 rpm means the capital N is the given to us that is 200 rpms. The width of the turbine at the inlet that is a B1 is 240 millimeters. Then velocity of the flow through the runner is a constant that is a Vf1 is equals to Vf2 as a constant. It is a magnitude as a 2.16 meter per second. Then the guide blades makes an angle of a 10 degree. Here the statement is so much important. The angle is of the guide blades and not the vanes. So the guide blades are making an angle of a 10 degree. We are going to show that in the detail in the velocity triangle. So this is the angle of a guide vanes. And the discharge at the outlet of the turbine is radial. As discharge at the outlet is the radial, means uh, we will have the maximum efficiency. That is the VW2 will be 0, that is the velocity of the at outlet will be 0, and directly we will have the VW2 as a, a 0, that is the V2 is equals to VF2, that is the velocity of the jet at the outlet will be equals to velocity of the flow at the outlet. And what the things those are asked to calculate that is the absolute velocity of the water at the inlet of the turbine that is the velocity of the jet V1 is asked to calculate. Then velocity of the whirl at the inlet that is a Vw1. Then uh, relative velocity of the inlet Vr1. Runner blade angles that is a theta and phi we are going to have in the velocity triangles. Then width of the runner at the outlet that is a B2. Weight of the water. Then head at the inlet of the turbine that is capital H and power developed that is a P and hydraulic efficiency. We will uh, firstly go for the given data, the given data as per discussion D1 is 1.08, D2 is 0 0.54, N as 200 rpm, B1 240 millimeter that is 0 0.24 meters. Then velocity of the flows those are same, we have one we have to 2.16 meter per second, guide angle angle of a guide blade alpha we are assuming it has alpha but denoting it as alpha it is magnitude as a 10 degree then discharge at outlet is radial so it indicates directly beta is a 90 degree and vw2 is equals to 0 and to calculate v1 vw1 vr1 theta and phi those are the angles of the runner blade then beta uh, then b2 then a weight head power and efficiency so, here we will see that the things D1 is the diameter at the inlet, D2 is the diameter at the outlet, this is the B1 that is width at the inlet, B2 is the width at the outlet, Vf1 velocity at the inlet, Vf2 velocity at the outlet and Vf1 and Vf2 are 
same one. Now we will see that what is the alpha and how it has to be shown. So here we are finding that as the outlet triangle I would like to go for firstly. As flow is a radial, so this is axis of rotation, so this is the radius. So along the radius, so this will be perpendicular to the tangent, it means that the whatever the Vw2 that is velocity of the whirl is a 0 and Vf2 will be equals to V2 along the same and beta will be 90 degree as it is a perpendicular to the tangent. So we are going to assume that the angle of the fan at the outlet tip with respect to the tangent it is a horizontal we consider rather to avoid the confusion. So horizontal lines are the we are assuming it as a tangents at the inlet end and the outlet end of the fan. So angle made by the blade at the outlet with respect to the horizontal we are going to assume it as a pi and that to be at a inlet we are going to assume it as a, a theta here I had shown it as a theta it will be here with respect to horizontal as a theta then the angle made by the jet with respect to the horizontal as jet is going to strike firstly over the guide veins means that the angle made by the guide vein is the angle made by the jet. So the velocity of the jet will be the velocity of the flow or velocity of the water at the guide veins. So this is the velocity of the jet along the guide veins. This is the line indicating the direction of the guide vein and angle made by the guide vein with respect to horizontal as alpha we assume it as a 10 degree. So perpendicular from the inlet tip that is a vertical line we can say vertical line is going to represent the velocity of the flow at inlet and the horizontal line from the starting of the velocity of the jet up to the extension below the inlet point is going to represent the velocity of the whirl at the inlet as a vw1 then the velocity of the that is relative velocity that is actual velocity with which the jet is going to strike the blade that is a blade that is a fan that is after coming out from the guide vein and going to strike to the main vein of the blade that velocity we are going to assume as a vr1 and its angle with respect to horizontal will be the theta as it is going to be along the tangent at the inlet and the angle made by the tangent and angle made by that actual velocity there is a relative velocity will be same that is a theta. So this is the general explanation about the things those are given and those are asked to calculate. Now we will go for calculation of the things one by one. Firstly we will go for the tangential velocities at the inlet and outlet that is u1 and u2. As we are knowing that u is equals to pi dn by 60 general expression. So u1 is equals to pi d1 n by 60 n will be the common number of rotations. So d1 is 1.08 and n is 200. So by solving it we will have the u1 as 11.31 meter per second. Similarly u2 for u2 there will be change that is a d2 diameter and diameter d2 is a 0.54 which is a not exactly but half of the inlet diameter that is a 0.54 into rotations as a common it is a 200 into divided by 60. So the velocity at the outlet that is peripheral velocity is a 5.65 meter per seconds. So this is the u1 and this is the u2 that is u1 and u2 have calculated those are essentially required in the further part of the calculations. Now we will go for the next part. The next part is the about the <coughs> absolute velocity that is a V1 that is a velocity of the jet at a inlet. Now for getting the a V1 we are going to calculate that V1 from the inlet velocity triangle. So from the inlet velocity triangle, if we will take the uh, sign of the alpha here for the triangle from this point to this point and this point. So if you will have a sign of the alpha is equals to opposite side by hypotenuse that is a Vf1 by V1. So V1 will be equals to Vf1 sin alpha as sin alpha is equals to Vf1 by 
phi 1 so phi of 1 is known to us that is a 2.16 alpha is known to us 10 degree by putting the values we will get phi 1 as 12.44 meter per second this is the magnitude of absolute velocity phi 1 at the inlet that is a jet velocity the next is the velocity of the whirl at the inlet that is phi w1 for getting the phi w1 so phi w1 is representing here the base of the triangle we are knowing now hypotenuse of the triangle we are knowing its opposite side sorry we are knowing this uh, phi f1 that is the vertical side we are knowing the angle alpha we want to calculate phi w1 either use the pythagoras or a or the trigonometric equation we will get the magnitude for the phi w1 so we are going to have the cos alpha so cos alpha is going to uh, correlate the adjacent side and the hypotenuse so adjacent side to the alpha is a phi w1 and hypotenuse is a v1 so cos alpha is equals to phi w1 by v1 so v1 is equals to phi w1 phi w sorry phi w1 is equals to phi1 cos of the alpha so phi1 is a 12.44 alpha is a 10 so 12.44 cos 10 degree it adds the value 12.25 meters per second and that we have calculated from this inlet triangle where angle made by a vf1 with respect to vw1 is a 90 degree here in enlarged view we will get the clearly this is the a vertical line v of 1 on a horizontal line v w 1. So, angle between this horizontal line and vertical line as a 90 degree. So, as this is a 90 degree, we are able to apply the trigonometric equation in the inlet velocity triangle. The next parameter that we will go for the relative velocity v r 1. So, v r 1 is a represented over a here. This is the v r 1. So, for finding the v r 1, we are knowing v of 1, we are knowing v w 1, we are knowing v 1, we have already calculated u 1. So, to calculate the v r 1, now we will consider this small triangle that is connecting end of the v r 1 and end of the v f 1 and originating from this point that is the uh, end of the v w 1 and intersection of u 1 and v w 1. So, this triangle we are going to consider here for the v r 1. So, again using the Pythagoras here, by Pythagoras we will have v r 1 square is equals to v f 1 square plus only this much magnitude is nothing but v w 1 minus u 1 square. So, rearranging the terms for v r 1, so v r 1 square will be there, so, square will be v r 1 square will be equals to v w 1 minus u 1 square plus v f 1 square after taking root phi r1 will be equal to root of phi w1 minus u1 square plus phi f1 square and we are knowing phi w1 velocity of the whirl at the inlet just now we have calculated as 12.25 then u1 that is 11.31 and phi f1 given magnitude it is a 2.16 it is a square so we get the phi r1 as a 2.35 meters per second it means that we got the magnitude for the relative velocity that is actual velocity with which water strikes the fan of a runner. Next parameter the runner blade angle at the inlet that is a theta. So, we want to calculate this theta now. For finding the theta we will be required to consider once again this small triangle that is right angle triangle in which angle made by v r 1 with respect to the horizontal is a theta. So, for finding theta now for this triangle we are knowing it is a base also the base is nothing but the v w 1 minus u 1 this is the base hypotenuse v r 1 we have calculated v f 1 also given to us. So, for finding theta either take the sin theta cos theta or tan theta we will get the magnitude for the theta. So, taking tan of the theta so tan theta is opposite side by adjacent side that is a vf1 upon the base so base is nothing but the vw1 minus u1 so putting over here we will have the equation as vf1 upon vw1 minus u1 u1 so tan theta is equals to 2.16 that is a vf1 vw1 12.25 minus u1 as 11.31 it implies that 
theta is equals to 66.48 degrees now we got angle at inlet also now we have to find out the angle at outlet then capital B power head and efficiency so for finding those things again we have to take the help of outlet velocity triangle that is for finding the runner blade angle at outlet runner blade means this is the vein of the runner and its angle at the outlet this is the phi so we will be required to consider this right angle triangle where beta is a 90 degree which is given to us that flow is radially outward so ultimately beta is 90 means this angle inside would be 90 degree so it includes the parameters as relative velocity at the outlet vr2 then u2 we have calculated u2 is, equal, is equals to pi d2 n by 60 then vf2 is equals to v2 vf2 also given to us so by using that vf2 u2 we have to find out the phi so it means that we have to correlate the opposite side and adjacent side so if you want to have the relation between opposite side and adjacent side means we have to go for tan of the tan of the angle so tan phi will be equals to opposite side v up to adjacent side u2 so tan phi is equals to v up to 2.16 and u2 5.6 phi it implies angle phi is equals to 20.9 degrees now the next part is the width of the runner at the outlet so for finding the width of the runner at the outlet that is a b2 we have to find out at the outlet it means that we will be required to have a cross sectional area in which that b will be width will be there it means that to have an area we will be required to have a discharge equation so correlating that by having by continuity equation q1 is equals to q2 is equals to q and introducing q is equals to area into velocity so cross sectional area or the peripheral area we can say cross sectional area at this point nothing but the b1 d1 into kt1 into velocity of the flow as a v of 1 is equals to d2 b2 into kt into v of 2 a kt i have not shown that is coefficient of thickness because coefficient of thickness will be the same one at both the sides and it will cancels to each other so i had not considered i have not represented over here so considered the part is pi d1 b1 v of 1 is equals to pi d2 b2 v of 2 it represents the discharge at the inlet this point and this represents the discharge at outlet this point cancelling common terms that is a pi and v of 1 and v of 2 as already we are knowing that b2 is a twice that of the b1 in general but by relation now we will see that what would be its a magnitude so cancelling the terms we will have the equation only in terms of the d1 b1 because the pi and v up 1 pi and v up 2 gets cancels to each other v up 1 is equals to v up 2 so cancels to each other d1 b1 is equals to d2 b2 we want to have a b2 so b2 is equals to d1 b1 by d2 putting the values of diameter at the inlet 1.08 width at the inlet b1 0 0.24 and divided by diameter at the outlet 0.54 we get the magnitude for the width at the outlet as a 0.48 meter you will see the width at the inlet that is 0.24 and we got at the outlet as 0.48 means it's a exactly the twice the width at the inlet the next parameter that is the weight of the water flowing through the runner per second that is how much amount of the how much amount of weight the water is going to exert indirectly we have to find out so weight is nothing but the mass into gravity as usual general equation mass is nothing but the in terms of the density that is a density is equal density is equals to mass upon volume so mass is a density into volume we want to calculate this per second so mass into density into volume per second into g so rearranging the terms we will get volume per unit second as a discharge so rho q into g will be there so rho g q rho and g are constant here rho is the density of the water q is the discharge that is a at the inlet because at the inlet and outlet both are same one so we will consider either at inlet or at outlet 
we will consider here only at the inlet that is we want to correlate further it is exactly how much amount of the weight has been exerted here at the inlet so we will consider area at the inlet and the velocity of the flow at the inlet so cross sectional area at the inlet is nothing but the area at the inlet is nothing but the water area it is a pi d1 b1 here also i have not considered the kt1 that is a kt1 if it is not given we should we should not to bother about it so pi d1 b1 v f1 so density as a 1000 by mistake i had here 9810 here what to consider it as a 1000 into 9.81 that is a g into pi into d1 as a 1.08 b1 as a 0.24 into v f1 as a 2.16 after solving this, we used to get the magnitude of the weight in kilo newtons per second as a 17.25. This is the magnitude of the weight of the water actually striking the runner. Next part is the head and the efficiency. First, we will see that the head at the inlet of the turbine, as it is a this is a reaction turbine. So it will have the both the energies that is the kinetic energy and the pressure energy. It means that it is a combination of the kinetic head and the pressure head. There is the pressure head and the velocity head we can say. And the pressure head at the inlet is nothing but the Vw1 u1 plus minus Vw2 u2 by g and the velocity head at the uh, velocity head from the th this will be the head at the inlet and this head, this will be the head at the outlet. So pressure energy at the inlet and kinetic energy at the outlet we can say further so or combination of them so velocity at the outlet head outlet will be v2 and as it is a head so we have to v2 square by 2g that is a by a kinetic energy equation by Bernoulli's we can say v2 square by 2g again as the flow is radially outward so vw2 as a 0 so we will have only equation vw2 u1 by g in plus v2 square by 2g by putting the values of Vw1, U1, G as 9.81, V2 we have calculated, then by 2G if will go for, then we used to get the magnitude as 14.36. So this is the magnitude of the head or total head we can say at the inlet of the runner of the turbine. The next part is the power developed. The power developed is nothing but the runner power as we have seen the relation as a rho q into vw1 u1 plus minus vw2 u2 but as vw2 is a zero due to the radial outward flow so we'll have only rho q into vw1 u1 and for the q that is a discharge we have to use the relation area into velocity that is a1 into velocity v of 1 at the inlet so rho into density that is q as a pi d1 b1 that is the area into velocity as a vf1 into vw to u1 by putting all those values we will get the magnitude as 243.6 kilowatts this is the mechanical power developed by the runner which is also termed as a runner power then hydraulic efficiency is the ratio of runner power to the water power so runner power we have, we have a runner power calculated here and water power is rho gh if we put up those values then also it works otherwise in the previous slide we had seen the hydraulic efficiency the ratio of the runner power to the water power and by rearranging the terms we used to get the magnitude as equation as vw1 u1 plus minus vw2 u2 by g into h that is the total head which we have calculated as a 14.36 meters as vw2 is a zero so we will have the relation as a vw1 u1 by g into h by quoting all those values that is a vw1 12.25 into u1 11.31 divided by g as a 9.81 into h as 14.36 here is a multiplication sign by mistake i forgot to have here in so we will get the magnitude as a 0.9835 or 98.35 percent efficiency it means that the whatever the turbine we have here in for a given condition it converts 98.35 percent of the 
hydraulic energy to the mechanical energy this is a meaning of the hydraulic efficiency so in this way i have calculated all the parameters required or asked to calculate with the help of given data known equations and most important is the inlet and outlet velocity triangles this is inlet triangle and this is outlet velocity triangles okay thank you thank you very much